The first fossils we're going to be talking about are referred to as Sahelanthropus chadensis. Discovered just about 10 years ago, they come from a very surprising place. They come from not East Africa, where much of the fossils we'll be talking about over the next several weeks come from, but from the desert of the Lake Chad Basin in Central Africa. This is a very different environment than many of the fossils we'll be talking about come from, and their discovery was quite a surprise. Looking at our map, we can see here that Lake Chad is situated here in Central Africa, whereas the other fossils we'll be talking about today come from the East African Rift Valley, from Ethiopia, and from Kenya. While Lake Chad is a dry desert basin today, at various times in the past, the lake has been much larger, and the environment around that area has been much more humid and amenable to the kind of tropical forest environments that we think our Miocene hominid ancestors emerged from. Looking at the specimen itself, here's a reconstruction, a cast reconstruction of the skull of Sahelanthropus. Now, there's a number of features immediately that can jump out in looking at this specimen. First of all, it has a large supraorbital torus occupying prominently the area above the orbits. It also has fairly large canines, but in the whole, it has a very flat and human-like face in a lot of characteristics, especially in compared to primates. Now, this is a reconstruction. The actual specimen as it was discovered, unfortunately, is not quite as well preserved. One of the challenges, again, in analyzing fossils is that oftentimes the preservation leaves something to be desired. So part of the generation of knowledge about the fossil is trying to reconstruct what that fossil actually looked like. That re-image you saw just a moment ago of the reconstructed Sahelanthropus was a product of a considerable amount of work using CT scan data to reconstruct the exact position of the bones. The specimen as it was discovered was distorted not just through fragments and cracks that permeate throughout the specimen, but also through distortion in terms of warping of the bones themselves. This specimen, based on the other kinds of fauna that it's found with, dates to something like six to seven million years ago, most likely. So during that six to seven million years of time, unfortunately, the fossil obviously has been distorted, and so that's part of the information we need to factor in in thinking about the specimen. But again, in looking at this specimen, there are a number of arguments that have been evoked for why it's a hominin. Recall again that the two most commonly argued features to indicate the origins of hominins are bipedality and reduction in canines. Now this specimen actually has, if you look at the canine here, a fairly large canine. You can see it's a little bit still diamond shaped, so with a projection of a point here. But it's not a huge canine, and it's especially not huge if you look at it in the context of the large superorbital torus and some of the other potentially sexually dimorphic characters this has. The discoverers of this specimen have argued that this is actually a male on the basis of some of these robust facial features. If it's a male, then this small projecting canine is just that, relatively small. Think again about what the male canines in chimpanzees or gorillas look like. Very large, very projecting, honing complexes suggesting the distal wear on the back of the tooth. So this specimen, in contrast, has a relatively small canine, although not absolutely small. But even more important for the arguments about Sahelanthropus is that in addition to having a little bit of distal wear on the back of the tooth, there's also a little bit of apical wear. So the tip of the tooth, the crown of the tooth, is wearing. Now this is something that we see in hominids, and we associate it with chewing, the human-like chewing, basically, a human-like masticatory motion that wears down the tip of the tooth, not just the posterior edge of the tooth, as we see in apes. So this canine has been very important for the argument that this is a hominin. Additionally, there's the argument that this specimen is bipedal. Recall that bipedality expresses itself throughout our entire skeleton. So while we don't have necessarily a complete postcranial skeleton for this individual, the cranium itself provides us some information about bipedality because it tells us something about body position and how habitually the head was situated on the body. When this specimen was initially published, one of the big arguments for this being a bipedal creature have to do with the position of the foramen magnum. Now you recall the foramen magnum is the opening on the base of the skull that's associated with the outlet basically of the brain and the origin of the spine. In humans, the foramen magnum is anteriorly positioned. It's situated near the middle part of the skull because humans are, carry our skull directly on top of our spine. So our head is directly on top of our shoulders, and therefore that foramen magnum is situated right in the middle of our skull. 
In apes, that are oftentimes in a quadrupedal forward position, that head is positioned out a little more anterior to the body. So the position of the foramen magnum on apes is oftentimes more posteriorly positioned. Unfortunately, the distortion on the base of the Sahelanthropus skull makes it difficult to reconstruct the exact frame and magnet position, but relative to some of the other features on the base of the skull, it's been argued that this is a relatively forward position of the frame and magnum, and that therefore that reflects a habitual head position, skull position, directly on top of the shoulders. In other words, the kind of head position you'd expect in a bipedal organism. Now there's another factor related to the frame and magnum that also argues potentially in favor of bipedality. And that's the relative position of the orbits compared to the base of the skull as measured by the frame and magnum. Now when we're bipedal and we're walking around, one of the things about our orbits, or our eyes, is that they're facing basically parallel to the surface of the ground. We're not constantly, our head isn't in a position where they're looking down at the ground, they're operating basically parallel to the ground. And parallel, in fact, at a consistent angle relative to the position of the frame and magnum. So that we can look at the angle between the frame and magnum and the orbits to try and reconstruct again habitual head position. So while humans have an angle between the frame and magnum and the orbits that approaches 90 degrees, Apes have a more acute angle, again associated with the posterior frame and magnum position that they have. So these two features, the relative position of the frame and magnum and the relative position of the frame and magnum relative to the orbits, have been used to argue that Salhanthropus is bipedal. Bipedal, reduced canines, hence we have the argument for it being a hominin. However, again, Sahelanthropus is represented by only a few fragmentary specimens. In addition to the skull that we see here, there's also a few mandibles and possibly some associated postcrania. So more work needs to be done to recover more fossils from the area to confirm exactly the morphology we're seeing, especially given the poor preservation of this specimen. Nevertheless, Sahelanthropus, at about six to seven million years of age, has been one of the candidates argued to be the earliest hominin, the earliest divergence of apes into the human lineage.